You know, I try to wear cool shirts and videos sometimes. This is the TwitchCon OBS shirt, the first OBS shirt. I have it, I'm finally wearing it in a video, and most of my framing doesn't actually allow you to see it. So, I end up wearing a lot of cool shirts that you never even know I have, because I don't wear them. So, as HDR technology in displays and game consoles, or high dynamic range, has been taking off, more and more streamers want the ability to play in the best possible conditions that their displays allow for. 4K, 60 FPS, high refresh rate, or high dynamic range. The problem is, HDR doesn't look right on its own for people on normal SDR displays. It looks like this. A gray, washed out, unsaturated mess. It's kind of hard to make it look good, and it's kind of hard to justify streaming that way when your viewers are going to be like, why does your game look like this, boy? or girl, or in between. Well, I have found a way to kind of make that work. There are a couple situations in which you would be really stuck when it comes to HDR video. That is, streaming PC games on a single PC setup that doesn't have a capture card that supports tone mapping, you know, a single PC just adding a game capture in OBS, you're playing in HDR, your game in OBS looks like crap. It's one situation where there's no option in OBS to fix it. The second situation is if you're using a capture card like the one I just reviewed, the Elgato 4K 60S Plus, which can record and pass through HDR, but doesn't tone map it for you, and there are others like it, then the same thing. Your footage that you're streaming, if you actually want to play in HDR, looks really bad. Well, I've created a resource that will help you in this regard, and in this video, I'm quickly going to show you how to use it. Now, there is no real way to get real HDR to SDR tone mapping in OBS Studio, because OBS does not support a 10-bit pipeline, 10-bit being the bit depth that is required for HDR video, it only operates in 8-bit, so as soon as you bring an HDR signal in, it's no longer HDR, even though it's not converted down to SDR, which is why certain capture cards, like the 4K60 Pro Mark II from Elgato, or the Live Gamer 4K from Avermedia, both of those tone map that for you in OBS, so it looks great, it looks fine. Software game capture can't do that at this point in time. So, you can kind of try to finagle it using the color correction settings in OBS and sort of do something, but it ends up not looking right. So I've actually created a series of LUTs that you can use to make your HDR to SDR transition actually work. And again, this works whether you're doing software game capture or from a capture card that isn't tone mapping it for you. I've tested it with a few different games. So it's available on a selfie page linked in the description, and it is a pack of a few different LUTs. I have they're available in both PNG, which can be used for OBS, or .cube LUTs, which can be used for OBS, but those can also be used for video editors like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve. So for OBS specifically, add in your game capture source. For example, I'm adding a game capture for Doom Eternal running in HDR, and then go to your video source in your source list, right-click it, filters, add new filter, apply LUT. Then browse for a LUT and choose the specific LUT available. I have two that are just the generic HDR to SDR conversion that more or less gets you there as a starting point for most games. I have tested it on a variety of games. For the most part, this will get you kind of a faux tone mapping look where it looks more like your viewers would expect and most viewers aren't gonna notice a difference. And, but it is not fine tuned for any particular game. So from there, you would add a color correction filter or color grading using the stream effects plugin and add in some contrast, some saturation and kind of mess with it a little bit based on your game. I also have a few other LUTs for specific games, Doom Eternal, Rocket League, and God of War. And these are tweaked specifically for the exposures present in those games, as well as where the colors are supposed to be, and fine-tuned it based on how it looked in my very high-end HDR displays. And so those would be specific to those games that get you much more of an accurate look for those specific games, because Rocket League runs a lot brighter than Doom Eternal. God of War runs a lot more saturated than Rocket League, so it's fine-tuned for those, and again, you can use them in OBS, or in your favorite video editor if it supports LUTs, and you have that option available. And then I also have a couple bonus LUTs thrown in there that are just for if you're doing normal capture of a game in general, it will make, you know, in SDR, it will make that game look a little bit better for your live stream. Now that is a bonus as a kind of teaser, because if there's a big enough response to this, if you guys actually like this, and you know, want more of it, I can start releasing like individual per game settings for each of these to really make each game, whether you're in HDR or SDR, look quite a bit better. Real quick, let's flip over to the desktop and I'll show you how to apply these in Resolve super fast. In DaVinci Resolve, you've got your HDR gameplay imported. Go to Color tab. Find your node. Enable nodes if you don't have it. Right click. LUT. 3D LUT. And find it here. If you haven't added it to your folder already, go to File. Project Settings. Color Management. 
Scroll down, open LUT folder, make a new folder, call this, say, OBS LUTs from EpostVox. Copy them in that folder, paste them in that folder, and then you will need to reload your project. Then you'll need to close Resolve, reopen it, right-click LUTs, 3D LUTs, find that folder you just made, and apply the specific one. So for this one, I have Rocket League here, and you're good to go. You got the colored footage. Great. Then you can add more nodes and add brightness, contrast, saturation, tweak it to how you like it, but this is a good starting point. Resolve works in a uh, floating point kind of node mode, so any changes you make after the point of the LUT is not destructive, so the LUT, you know, won't totally ruin your footage. But yeah, I'm just curious what your guys' feedback is. If you want to see more of these, I will, like I said, release these per game. But I just wanted to get these out here as a resource because I've had more people come to me being like, I want to play in HDR, but it looks bad. What do? Here's here's a potential solution. I just, I like solving problems. I like finding things that, you know, streamers struggle with and finding ways around it. Because if you struggle with it, that means someone else is going to be struggling with it. And you all don't have to struggle in silence. Here you go. Let me know what you think. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech, education, and stream guides. I'm Eiffel's Vox, your stream professor. I'll see you next time. OBS shirt. You can totally see it, right? At this point, why do I even wear a shirt?